Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kokish, and I am here with my good friend Kenny, the anarchist chef, Palerentano, and really hard name to spell and pronounce, but uh, he's someone who I've known for several years now in the, in the movement. I don't know, how far do we go back? Jeez, uh, so back to the first printing of the, of the book, actually, was the first time we connected, and I ordered like 500 of them to give out at an event. He's been someone who gets what I'm trying to do with the tool and the message that is the book, Freedom, and... and, and if, if, probably as many people have heard of it from his efforts as anybody else who supported it. But we've also hung out at a number of events, and, and I'm, I'm a big fan of his cooking. It's a huge part of what he does. And uh, he's, he's been a big bridge to the rainbow gathering, the rainbow community uh, for the libertarian movement, but also uh, bringing a higher conscientiousness. You know, he's been a, a big part of my influence going, I still can only say vegan-ish. He can say vegan. Uh, but, I, you know, I say vegan-ish, and, and, and he's been a huge part of the influence, influential people here, uh, you know, who, in the movement who have led me to that. But today we're going to talk about something totally different. And a lot of us are concerned about identity politics, and we're, we're pissed off. Like, you see, like that, and, and, and as libertarians, I think we have this, we want to live in denial of identity politics, because we, we, we're all colorblind, you know, we judge as individuals, we, we, see, we see to the content of someone's character, right? But this is a reality that, that we have to face in communicating with the mainstream, waking other people up, and Kenny is so concerned that he is going to be starting the Bald White Guys Caucus, bald, excuse me, Bald Bearded White Guys Caucus within the Libertarian Party to make sure that they get fair representation in this identity politics game. Kenny, I, I know, what, what's really been on your mind about this? Uh, one of the biggest things on my mind, especially at events where, where we get a lot of people together that sort of are all part of the movement, is the movement is so much bigger than anyone realizes. I've been traveling for three years now, full-time, conferences, festivals, rainbow gatherings, private events, and the movement, just in the U.S., I'd estimate at least 10 million. Like, the movement is so much bigger than any of the adjectives that we use. The rainbow is an anarchist event. Everyone who's been there or who lives that life, they probably don't identify as anarchists because they don't know the actual definition. Maybe they don't identify with the non-aggression principle because they haven't had it explained to them. But they don't steal. They don't violate other people's consent most of them don't pay taxes and, and they live it more than most people who identify as as anarchists or libertarians and that that's like as you know that's that's more important right right yeah it's all about what we're actually doing like how we're living what we're what we're presenting to the world by who we are if you tell people hey here's this great idea be like this do this and then you act the opposite of that it undermines the message if you have people who are living that message but aren't even speaking about it, they're still having an influence. And if we can just get everybody together to realize, like, oh, yeah, we've got eco-villages all around the world with people who live as anarchists and grow their own food. And we've got crypto communities all around the world with people who live as anarchists and cre are creating the alternatives to the Internet and the alternatives to all this media. We can bring it all together and just totally replace everything. If we do the parenting right, we grow the food right, we create the alternative media, and we organize ourselves and solve our problems in these ways, that, that's all we need. That's okay, but that's, that, come on, you've got, you've got to have, like, I, I mean, my, my audience, you know, you know my audience is, 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 is and there, there, is, there is a little difference in personality that I do want to appreciate okay. between Kenny and I, and, and I think in this sense, I, I'm a little more mainstream of the movement, uh, but again, maybe that's imposing my own false definition or, or, or parameters on this, but then I'm more of the, the scientific, hard-headed, statistical, like empirical you know, kind of approach and, and analytical attitude. And of course, we end up both motivated by love fundamentally, come to the same conclusions. Okay, but what you just said, Sounds great. You sound like a hippie man. Where's the plan? You know, like, and I want, I want to challenge you. Like, if, if these are your observations, you know, give, give there's some, there's some, there's something else to this. You know, what, what do you got? Well, I mean, it's the the actions in our life right now. So things like community gardens blowing up all over the states and other places, and then things like in Portland. We have a thing called the Portland Fruit Tree Project. If you have a fruit tree on your property, you can sign it up and it goes on a map and anyone can come pick that fruit. Or if you have a place where you want a publicly available fruit tree but you don't know how to plant a tree or anything, you can ask them and they'll come plant a tree. And so you can walk around Portland with this little app out and just pick fruit from all these people. And it's not you're not violating anyone's property because they've all been put up as community property 
that's, it's privately owned, yeah. but available to everyone. Little things like that, freedom cells, like Derek's always talking about, and John Bush, like these, this combination of of our our own actions in our personal lives and these these tools to connect, you know, cell four one one and the freedom cell concepts, the intentional communities that are forming. You know, I I live in some places in just in the U.S. where there's a hundred people that all live together, produce all of their own food, produce all of their own energy through mostly solar at this point. And they, they raise their kids together, and they are totally removed from the system. They pay property taxes so that they don't get their land stolen. And that's it's, their only it's, it's, it's my, uh, it's my, it's my, it's my leave, leave me alone cost in Arizona. Hold on, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta stay front and center here. So, uh, when we started talking about identity politics, I, I want. I mean, it, I think a lot of people in the community, uh, uh, they're already on board with everything you're saying, but there's something that is stopping most libertarians or anarchists from seeing what you're seeing. What is that? And that's, that's what I want to home in on from, from someone like you who has the wisdom that you do of having been involved as long as you have. When, when you, and and when, when you see people at a, at a libertarian gathering, what, what is it like uh, th that you think people need to get past to be able to, to really embody what, what you're advocating? Right. Well, the, on, the, on the small scale or like the purely in your head side, it's it's identifying with adjectives about things. Like if, if someone else, like I don't, I don't even use the word anarchist generally when I'm talking to other people, unless it's someone like you, who I know we have yeah. the same definition. Like well, even, even then, I say I say voluntarist because that's that's my motivation. You know, is to create harmony. Right. But even that, like voluntarist, then you have to. It, it, people don't know what it means. I go straight to the principles. Do you believe that you own yourself? Yeah. Do you believe interactions between humans should be voluntary? And if you ask any human yeah. those basic questions, they agree. Yeah. And well, it's, it, like, it's like what I do. It's a Socratic dialogue, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. And, and realizing that even if someone is totally on the other end of the spectrum in their economic thoughts, if they agree to those things, well, then you can just live in a different community than them, and it would be fine. But coming together and realizing that we agree on about 95% of where we want the world to be, and the other 5% is personal choice. And when you are open to that concept and you start going to some of these events that don't line up exactly or, or getting involved in some of these groups or what you know watching a speaker who you don't necessarily agree with you know when I was first coming up in this stuff I would bounce back and forth between like Peter Joseph and Stefan Molyneux and I would you know like I would go to totally opposing ideas on the surface but they're all talking about like how can we live a freer happier life like the synthesis of these things is is really where the answer is? I, I just gotta say for all for all the oh, things wow, about it's crazy. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, but, but but even 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 with that, just what you just said, that that we live in a world where it, it's no longer the TV propagandists or the state-supported authors who are our intellectual landmarks. Stefan Molyneux and Peter Joseph, and you go, future looks pretty good. Yeah. Speaking of which, I want to turn the last part of this yeah. into into a little infomercial for Steam it. And, well, and, and I think, uh, so Kenny does, what's, what's your handle on Steam? Kenny's Kitchen. Kenny's Kitchen. Is there, do we have apostrophes in No, Steam? No, no, uh, no grammar in there, just Kenny's Kitchen, just okay. yeah, straight right. through. So, and, and he does a, a blog on Steam it that has a lot about what he's doing in, in cooking and vegetarianism and veganism. It, I should say just a more conscientious lifestyle, because I think you're with me that the words and the lines are yeah. kind of arbitrary and silly. Mindful but, living. Mindful living, mindful eating. That's, that's kind of my, my approach to it but also in helping people get more effectively plugged into Steemit. And he's running a pool. You mind telling people about the pool that you've got going on real quick in yeah. Steemit? Yeah, I've got a thing called Tribe Steam Up, and it supports, right now, it's about 80 different uh, activists, conscious, anarchist-minded people, and it's voting on all of them. And then everyone who, who gets invested in the pool, they donate, you know, they not donate, but they put their steam or their steam power into the pool. They get a little bit high, they get higher voted out of it. But then that still spreads that wealth out to everyone else. It's like this balance between the, the capitalist and the totally anarcho-socialist <laughs> side. Like, by helping yourself, you're helping everyone else involved in it, too. And if somebody can't afford to donate in, if, as long as they're putting out content that fits 
the ideas, they still get supported by it. Okay, and it's a little weird because I know, uh, I hope most of my audience is already familiar with what Steam it is, but we just, oh, Steam it, oh, pools, and okay, you know, but, <laughs> but it's, right it's just, yeah, right, just <laughs> jump right in here. No, but it is important to know that Steam it is a, a blockchain based social media platform that is a challenge to the old platforms, and it pays you as a content creator fairly for your content. Well, you can argue about the fairness because it's, a, it's still market preference. Is the market fair? Well, it's certainly better than violent central control, right? Even if it's unfair. But it, it is a much more decentralized platform, and I, I, you've been a huge help in me getting up to speed there and, and getting my team plugged in to recognize the power of Steam and to maximize that. And, and as, as long as I got Kenny here, I want to plug him as a resource. I mean, you're open to being contacted. Is, yeah. if, if people want help getting up on Steam it, email? Uh, yeah, uh, K Palorantano. Uh, you had to like put we'll it in the put text. It in the notes. It'll, it'll be somewhere with it. K Palorantano at anarchapolco.com is the one that I use like publicly. How did you get an anarchapolco email? I, I work on the event every uh. year. <laughs> All right. So uh, the last thing that I want to say about this for, for my end in, in promoting people on Steam, and this is what, what I've decided to do with my stream, is that for every two posts that are mine original content material, I'm going to re steam somebody else's. So like every third post in my stream, because it, one of the challenges in getting on a new platform is if you're starting with zero followers, even if you bring in all your followers from other platforms, like I've been doing, I've been getting my YouTube subscribers, I've been getting Facebook followers and Twitter followers and Instagram, trying to get them on to steam it. And you, you know, you have to, it's gonna be, we have to be patient, we have to you know, actually work to make that shift happen. But for those of you who wanna create content, you can reach out to someone like Kenny. For me, all you gotta do is email me Give me you know a post a week of your favorite material, Adam at the and it'll go into our, our restream feed and, and, and we want to help everybody get that leg up. And and, and you know that's to turn back to the uh, you know the original topic here about you know getting past identity politics, uh, I think really it's if if we want to take a leadership role in society and say, Hey guys, this is the way forward. We don't we don't need governments anymore. We have better alternatives, we can do this without the violence we have to embody it. And one of the things that I've seen a lot in social media and, and in our movement, and, and who knows how much of this is infiltration or saboteurs or people who don't really believe in the message, but I think people who do believe in the message are helpers, are collaborators, are cooperators. We want to lift everybody up. And among activists, we see the, you know, the crab in the bucket mentality. Anybody goes up, we're going to pull them down. And it's like, I think we're moving past that. I think Steam, it, and if you see the community on Steam, it, it's, it's, um, Certainly on a lot nicer than what you see in Facebook Flame Wars. Yeah, yeah, the trolls are so rare, and the people decide if they want that troll to even be seen. It doesn't, not censorship in the sense of like removing them, but just they get moved down. So they're at the bottom of the comments instead of being the top one because there's the most activity on it. And yeah, it's the, 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 the platform incentivizes positive behavior, like good for the community behavior. It's built right into the system. And that's, that's like such, such a beautiful thing to see, how we can just design systems that incentivize what we want to see, and it makes people act better. Even sociopaths act better when the system rewards good behavior. How like, about that? <laughs> all right, thank you so much, Kenny. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Palantano will include all the links and his email in the notes. Check him out on Steam it and uh, kennysconsciouskitchen.com. Yep. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steamit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain based solutions including DTube and you can find that through Steamit.com as well as my own page there at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.